how not to sell a house. In today's video, we're talking about just that, how you can take a listing and do all the wrong things and not sell it. Let's get it. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Sasha Chapman here with Chapman Realty Group, powered and brokered by EXP. I'm an agent here on the north side of Fort Worth, serving all of DFW. And in today's video, we're talking about how you don't sell a home. Okay, what are the things that people do that stop them from selling a home? Let's get into my list real quick. All right, number one. Number one we see all the time, overpricing the home. You never want to overprice the home because... Frankly, it's overpriced. If it's, if it's overpriced, good agents are not going to waste their time bringing the clients to see it. I know when I run comps on the home before I take my buyers out, if I see a house that's twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 overpriced in the neighborhood, I'm like, I don't feel like fighting with that agent or dealing with whatever their seller's issues is because it's just that. It's you guys' issue. It's the seller's issue. It's the listing agent's issue. It's not going to be my buyer's issue, and I don't want to play the game of rolling the dice on an appraisal. So I tell my clients straight up, that home's overpriced. Unless we can get them to come down here, we'll go. The only time I want them to I want to go and see that listing is if I've had that conversation with that client agent before, say, hey, we're not gonna pay that listing price or why'd you guys price that way? I'll listen. But number one. So have that conversation up front. I have learned to walk away from listings in which the seller wants me to overprice their home. Because frankly, I don't want to be arguing with them about what the right price is for the home anyway. So, price it out right, you won't have a problem. Number two, <laughs> jacked up pictures. iPhone pictures, Android pictures. I understand the technology on the phones are great, but they're not real estate photographer photos. Okay. Um, and I would just say, I'll be wanting to say, there is a line in the area in which you do bring real estate photographers in there, and you don't. So I, for one, saw, okay, ooh, I should probably shouldn't bring a photographer in and spend that money for houses under a certain dollar amount. And then I didn't do it. And it took me a lot longer to sell that house than I thought. Learned my lesson. But if you have a nice listing in a nice neighborhood and you're shooting iPhone pictures, especially portrait versus landscape, that's a problem. The first time a person comes to see contact with the home is online. Three, nice photos, no staging, all right? That's a hard one. That's a hard one because sometimes you can't control that. Um, you got that's that's on the client. If the client won't stage the home to look decently, and you just got stuff everywhere, so that's not something that you want to have. You want the house looking good in a good light from that standpoint. All right. Four. Difficult showings. One more thing that's not exactly on the agent, but it could be. Okay, so when it's on you, let's talk about that. If you are the agent who doesn't have a super box or combo box or whatever, and every last communication and schedule has to go through you, pick up the phone, man. Pick up the phone. Woo, that burns me up more than I have to text an agent, call an agent to, to get a showing, and then they don't pick up the phone for like three straight hours. Annoying. I'm going on to the next house. I, I'll put you on the list, but I'm like, I tell my clients, they're, they're difficult to get in touch with this agent. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they got an offer, maybe they don't. Most of the times, those are the ones who don't have offers, but you cannot get them on the phone. So, no, nah, that's on you. Now, when it's on your client, it's the restrictive showings. Like, ultra restrictive. Right now, coronavirus, everything's still restrictive, and we understand that. But I did have a client at one point in time who had... Um, Little kids, and like, well, they got to do their nap time from, what was it? I think it was like nap time from 2 to 5, but then they got to go to bed by 7.30. Like, so you give me two hours to show the house, basically? And maybe a couple hours in the morning? Like, okay, most people get off work at 5 o'clock, so we got to figure that out. Well, this is what it is. And I had one of these mama bears who was like, that's like, and I finally told Papa Bear, it's like, y'all making it hard to sell the house. You know, I understand the little dog has got to get some sleep. I, I totally get it. Let's do an open house strategy, but they didn't want to do an open house strategy. Um, so they made it a little bit difficult from that perspective, but I had to really just sit down and have the conversations like, hey, you got great pictures. The house is getting lots of views online. All that stuff should be translating into showings. But our restrictive showing policy is not allowing people to see the home. If they can't see the home, they're not going to buy the home. They finally lined up and was able to get that done. Okay, 
but you gotta get that one figured out, okay? And last but not least, ridiculous negotiations. And I'm talking about some stuff that just don't make sense. I understand that sometimes uh, our clients' bottom line is really tight. On divorce listings, there's a whole lot of stuff we're going through with all that. I, I get it. I, I sell a lot of houses, I get it. However, the condition of the home is the condition of the home. And that condition of the home is the seller's problem. I'm not talking about paint, little things like that. I'm talking about the big stuff. Foundation, plumbing, electrical, AC, you know, roofing. Those are the big five. We all know those are our big five, right? Most buyers are not going to buy a house with a jacked up roof. Frankly, if the roof is jacked up, it's probably not going to pass an FHA or VA inspection anyway. So you need to talk to your client about getting that stuff worked out and getting that stuff taken care of before they put it on the market. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave your comments down below in the comment section. Let me know a couple of your stories of some deal killers, things that you have had to learn from and how not to sell a house and you not doing those things again. If you, guys have any, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Peace.